Well, thanks so much for joining us. My name is Kaylin Langiza, and I'm a product marketing director at Procore, which means I like to talk a lot about a lot of things and have a lot of fun with customers like all of you. So thank you so much for being here at Groundbreak 2022 in New Orleans. Fun fact, when you're wearing black, don't eat a beignet, all right? I kind of got a little bit of the powdered sugar everywhere still, so I apologize if I'm a little disheveled, you know, those kind of things happen. So welcome to our session um, about construction financials. And, you know, I kind of got to say this, and if boss man Paul's in the room, just got to make sure, hey, you know what? Uh, we are a public traded company now, so please do not make any financial decisions based on the information you learn in this room. If I don't say this information, I get yelled at. So we're done with that. Thanks so much. Have a great day. So, oh, my half face again. This did this to me before. All right. I'm Improvement, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, and I'm joined with our uh, VP of Product from Financials, Jeff Lewis, who you saw in the keynote earlier today, makes some fun announcements. So we have a lot of good things to talk about, continuing that conversation for this morning. All right, so taking a top of the skyscraper look down over your project processes, are your teams really equipped? to properly handle challenges that construction financial management brings to light every single day on a job site. We depend on financial information flowing between the office and the field. Using spreadsheets, legacy ERP solutions can be manual, chaotic, lack real-time data, and on top of that, these solutions are disconnected so information is siloed. <sighs> We're not gonna break down what's difficult. All right, now we are. All right, so what are some of those biggest challenges for teams right now to manage financial uh, on a construction project? Well, depends on who you ask, the time of day, if you're in a trailer or an office or at a supplier, and if there's coffee involved. Any of those things are usually what it happens, but let's break down some of those things. Those with the access to the costs and those that inform on the costs may not be in sync. This creates inaccuracies on managing costs that is a daily job by both parties, right? So because of that, you need to stop, collaborate, and listen, as our friend Vanilla Ice likes to say. <laughs> Current systemologies may not allow for such collaboration. Information in disparate silos that don't feed each other can break costs and budget details. As we've seen over the past few years, things change fast, frequently, and obviously sometimes furiously. Giving access to the full picture at a moment's notice can critically help teams make the most informed decisions. And you know what, needs are different. Each stakeholder has a different need for the information they have or can gain access to, whether that be accounts payable, cash flow statements, inventory, job costing, field productivity data, the list goes on and on and on. Having that holistic view of a round trip of money on a project creates a critical understanding for the health, right? Aligning to technologies that help equip your teams to keep information in a single platform gives a more robust opportunity to learn and do better on the next floor, the next floor, and the next project. It's one of my favorite phrases. We used it in the last session, too. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, money, right? Money is the universal tie that makes a project move forward. Having accurate cost information on each project keeps everyone in alignment on budgets, spends, outstanding invoices, cost of supplies, and more. So what's the best way we can make sure this happens on any project or portfolio? Having that full 360 degree financial visibility to ensure complete cost management clarity. And how that happens is the next piece of the puzzle. Putting the right tools in the place to accurately connect all stakeholders is an area where Procore is focused on getting it right for everyone, for every single stakeholder. So connecting the field in the office, aligning those stakeholders correctly, aligning costs and budgets in the correct places at the correct time, and payments and forecasting easier with more visibility. All stakeholders, specialty contractor, general contractor, owner, have the same critical need for accurate cost management. So as you've seen this graphic a few times today, 
the financial management piece is one of the ones that is just um, completely important to the whole Procore platform strategy from start to finish of any project. Connecting the field and office, collaboration, ensuring everyone has access to the same, same information at a moment's notice is something that Procore is extremely focused on. So enough about me. Now we're going to talk to Jeff, and he's going to break down financial management for us. Thank you. You're Can't welcome. believe you reused the same line. I like know. You know, continuity is something that I love. Yes, that's good. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you everyone for coming. Um, I'm Jeff Lewis, VP of Product for our financials product line here at Procore. Um, so I've been at Procore now for three and a half years. Um, so this is actually my second in-person groundbreak. I was there at Phoenix 2019. So it's good to be back in person, which I'm sure you've heard at every single talk uh, so far today. <laughs> um, but before that, I was the head of product at Honest Buildings, which Procore acquired in 2019. And so I, Honest Buildings, for those who don't know, was an owner-focused cost management system. So now that I've been doing construction cost management software for almost 10 years, I feel like I'm just starting to scratch the surface of how <laughs> managing costs in construction actually works. Um, but yeah, so I have a sort of an owner background and have been working a lot more closely with general contractors and, and specialty contractors more recently. So um, I know a lot of you probably saw some of the things I mentioned about financials on stage earlier today. So I'll try to take it in a little bit of a different direction. I'll talk a little bit about the things we're doing, but also try to spend a little bit of time talking about why we're doing those things and how we sort of thought about those, um, if that sounds okay to you all. So for first we will start by sort of, I guess, trying to clarify, I think, the way we think about financials in Procore. So this idea of connecting field to office is so important. I was just talking to a, a customer today and he sort of said, I think of Procore as the collaboration hub for my team interacting with all of, you know, this was a general contractor, interacting with all of my subcontractors. Procore is sort of that collaboration system. And he said, and we always thought about that from a project management perspective, you know, drawings, documents, RFIs, but where we missed is we didn't think about that from change orders from invoices, right? So it's this very collaborative sport between you and the people you're working with on a project to get all the information you need to pass it over to the accounting team to put into the system. So we sort of think about that loop and we're very focused on building tools that are good for those field teams to actually collect that information, manage that information, take action on that information before it eventually gets fed over to the accounting team. All right, so some of the things we've been working on one is change management. So we have spent probably the, the biggest portion of our R&D dollars over the past two years. And we, when we think R&D dollars, we're basically talking about software developers, UX designers, product managers. Where are we spending their time and what new features are we developing? We've put most of our chips on change management. And the reason we did that is managing change is the hardest and most important part of managing any construction costs or any construction projects costs, excuse me. Um, that's true whether you're, you're an owner, you obviously want to reduce change orders. That's true if you're a specialty contractor, you want to make sure you're actually able to bill for all those change orders. General contractors have to deal with both. We've completely redesigned our change management tools to basically become this central place where you can go in and see that one log, the sort of command center of all the different things you're doing on a project to deal with change. Um, and one of the things we're focused on actually is trying to get as much stuff in there as possible. So, you know, we were looking today at some of the quick capture type stuff, um, the voice to text on the phone, thinking about ways to make it much easier to capture as much information as you can and put it in the system. We actually want people to create more change events. Hopefully you void out a lot of them because you ultimately mitigate the cost risk of those, but we want Procore to be that system that makes it very easy to capture everything, manage that change, and sort of deal with it until you get it ready to become an approved change order to put into the accounting system. We've spent a lot of time with customers actually understanding, seeing them click through change management. I think one of the things I've heard a lot of over the years is that change management in Procore, yes, it all works. There's probably a few too many clicks here and there. So we've been very focused on like, okay, how can we redesign that, make it easier, make it simpler, just make it one screen where you can do everything you need to do. Um, so I know that stuff is not always necessarily the most exciting stuff for you to think about, but we hope that over time, just all these new screens, all these user experience things, if you're managing 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000 change events on a project, becomes much, much, much easier for your teams to manage. So that's, that's one of our sort of big thoughts behind change management. 
The next area is configurability and flexibility. So Kayla mentioned, we want to solve financial management for all stakeholders, right? And I think it's fairly obvious to folks that Procore, when we were built, was a general contractor tool. Um, and we still obviously serve general contractors, in our opinion, very well. Continue to need to make the product much better for that group. But we've also expanded into owners. We've expanded into subcontractors. We've expanded up market, down market, international. And it turns out, especially when it comes to managing costs, everybody has their own specific process. And so we want to make it really easy for you guys to tailor that process to actually work for your teams. One of the things I hear all the time is like, it either fully works for my team or it doesn't work at all. And we want to make sure that it you know, really can fully work for your team. So we've invested in configurability and work breakdown structure, approval workflows, uh, custom fields. So just trying to really make it possible for you all to, to really manage what you need to do out of Procore. Um, and then lastly, and this is a good dovetail for the folks who were in this room before we kicked you out and brought you back. <laughs> we, we've also been working really hard on creating uh, re great reporting, right? Clearly, one of the reasons you use financials is to put your data in the system so that you can get it out and report on it. And we've made a big improvement in improving the uh, big investment in improving the reporting tools in Procore. Makes it super easy to grab all the project information, including things that shockingly you could not get before, like inactive project data. Really easy to even do kind of simple stuff like, hey, what things have I approved but not yet sent to the ERP? You know, just trying to make your lives uh, simple. So again, these are some of the ways we've thought about some of the major improvements we've got going on inside financials. And again, the goal here is for that ERP system, everyone's still gonna have an ERP system, right? You need to close the books, you need to have a general ledger, that's not going away. But Procore becomes this new front end, effectively, for the accounting system. That's this collaborative hub where you can interact with your subs, get RFQs, um, you know, work change orders through the process, proactively manage risk, and then once those things are ready, actually send them through to the accounting system. So obviously we've spent a lot of time and effort there. I mentioned this morning we launched a large number of new Procore built connectors. So what that means is if you leverage one of those systems like Acumatica or QuickBooks Online, Workday, which is coming soon, um, we now have an out-of-the-box connector that allows you to hook Procore right up to your accounting system and saves you a bunch of time and effort. We don't do that for every single accounting system in the world, but we know there are other accounting systems. We've also got this partner-built connectors. I know Jonathan will talk in a minute about computer guidance, which is one we worked on uh, with them to hook up to uh, their accounting system. And we've also got these custom-built connectors, right? So that even, no matter how much we do, how much our marketplace does, there will always be custom use cases, and we have a lot of experience doing that, and we know it's critical to make these systems talk seamlessly back and forth. And it's not just me saying it. We've validated with our customers that two out of three customers in the Procore 2022 ROI report agree that using Procore has helped them improve their profit margins, right? And that's what it's all about at the end of the day. You guys want to run profitable projects. Uh, managing costs is critical. Um, and, you know, again, it's, it's really working and 70% and of customers say that Procore has helped them make their forecasts more accurate, right? So this is exciting stuff and we're going to continue to invest there. Um, Obviously, I would say that, right? I have a, a good reason to say that. I'm a little biased, but uh, <laughs> we're going to bring up uh, Jonathan, who I think can speak much more effectively to how his organization has actually used this um, over at Big D. Jonathan? All right. Thank you. I was told I was going to get a high five. Boom. <laughs> you want Kayla? So, Top Gun high yeah. fives all around. I feel included now. So, <laughs> um, my name is Jonathan Gooch. I'm with uh, Big D Companies. A um, little bit about myself. I've been in the industry for about 20 years. Um, uh, I, I started uh, my first job. My first real job was uh, working for a small subcontractors doing uh, subcontractor doing footings and foundations. So in the morning, I would do the QuickBooks. And then in the afternoon, I would go and lift uh, Simon's forms. And um, that quickly inspired me to go to college and get a degree. <laughs> and um, But I got a degree, and construction dragged me right back in because it's just something about construction and having the pride of being able to look at the buildings that you've built. And I still, you know, drive around and say like, hey kids, look at that foundation. I, I carried a form on that, you know, and they don't <laughs> care. It's underground anyways, so they can't really see it. Can't really see it. But uh, anyways, um, so I'm excited today to talk a little bit about Big D's partnership with Procore and some of the things that we've done. And I realize that everyone here is, you know, somewhere, some, we're all using different tools and 
and uh, we're all in different parts of our journey with Procore, but this is what we've done and it's, and it's helped us a lot. So a little bit about Big D um, companies. Um, so we've been in business for 55 years, um, been around for 55 years. We are in uh, 16 offices in nine different states from California to Minnesota. Minnesota people. Woo. Yeah. Okay, anyways. Uh, <laughs> So we're a general contractor. We have about, we do about just a little over two billion in revenue, and we do uh, self-perform concrete in some of our markets. We've been blessed to Big D to have a great culture uh, that was been handed down by our founder. Um, we call it the Big Idea, and there's three main tenets: it's respect, people, and truth. Uh, respect. We like to give equal respect to customers, employees, and our trade partners, uh, people. We like to assemble the best team. We want to be the most sought-after contractor in the industry. And then truth, we want to build with truth, and um, if you say it, you do it. So a few years ago, it became apparent to the leadership at Big D that some of our processes were antiquated and that it was stifling our communication and that we needed to basically shape up in order to keep our promises to our customers. Um, so with historical processes, we had ineffective and antiquated ways of communicating. We had separate systems owning information and bringing that information together needed to be done manually. Um, we made it work, but it was a company-wide effort. And so in order to have a forecast meeting, we were having to gather the information from our accounting ERC, our ERP system and our construction management, and we were having to put that together and, um, and put it in, in, a, in a format that our project management team, our shareholders, could, our stakeholders could digest and that they could have crystal clear understanding of where they're at on their project. Now, we did it for nearly 50 years, but it was no simple task, and it's really difficult to do that. Um, so, uh, let me see here, next one. So as you can see from the video, we are in the business of exceeding expectations, fostering relationships, and keeping our promises. When we set out to overhaul our approach to construction cost management, we knew the keys to success would be a combination of effective communication, streamlined uh, systems of record, and aligned stakeholders. One of the biggest pieces of enabling our culture is effective communication. We believe that cost management starts with the people and that each individual uh, owns their respective area and brings their insight to the team. So historically, like I said, we had two different systems. We had a two systems siloed uh, and uh, our project manager and our accounting software. Accountants were the only people in our accounting software and our project managers uh, did, never got in there. So obviously there was an issue. Um, Big D set the stage for successful teams by ensuring easy access and visibility to the project data across all stakeholders and subcontractors to owners and back again. So how did we do it? So by aligning on a single source of truth. So Procore offered our company a digitized way to ensure that we are adhering to our culture built on trust. Like I mentioned before, um, our PM, uh, our accounting software and our PM software were siloed in two different systems. Through our ERP integration, um, we are now able to view our cost data within Procore. Instead of transferring budgets or costs back and forth, our teams now have access to up to the minute uh, budget and cost data. And this has been a game changer for Big D. As a general contractor, Big D relies on having great partnerships with trade partners to accomplish our goals. We want to establish the best teams internally and externally and want to set everybody up for success. For this reason, we offer a Procore uh, platform to our subcontractors. So our subcontractors uh, utilize Procore as well. They, um, our subcontracts are written in Procore. They are uh, uh, you know, signed, fully executed through Procore as, as well as change management. Our subcontractors also uh, do their monthly invoices through Procore, and, and so uh, we're able to streamline all that system. So gone are the days of looking around the office on fax machines for <laughs> random pay requests, or uh, I see a few heads nodding, probably still happens, um, <laughs> no? Uh, or random emails, um, and so this has really helped uh, streamline that for everybody, and it has uh, saved countless hours across the board. So uh, keeping a project safe, on time, and on budget is critical to, to being successful in this industry. So the quicker you're able to identify issues, the quicker you're able to fix them. And we all know time is money. So this having you know, the financial and the budget data at our project manager, at our stakeholders' uh, fingertips at all times has been a game changer. 
and we have seen uh, the fruits of that. So with the whales moving within Procore, it translates to Big D being able to keep its promises to our employees, our trade partners, and our clients by bringing the projects in safely, on time, and on budget. So we are on our way to solving the age-old issue of alignment of trade partners, uh, GCs, and owners. So Jeff, now I have a question for you. What's next? Well, I'm glad you asked, John. Yeah. Well. No, we've got to keep it, keep it upbeat at this uh, afternoon session on financials. Uh, that was awesome. Thank you yep. so much. Um, is it supposed to be half black and half white? Is that the way it's, it's like up? a cookie. OK. There we go. There we go. All right. <laughs> It doesn't like to go just forward once. It has to, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> We're figuring it out. We're figuring it out, y'all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, no live demos, at least. That's the, that's the key. No, just kidding. Um, Can you not bust the chops on that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, OK, so the next thing for us is how do you actually get people paid in construction? We know it is super difficult. There's a bunch of reasons that's true. There's complexities in each direction. So you have to collect all of this information from your subcontractors, lien waivers, COIs, all these different things. You have to have to, have to reach one or even two tiers down to get sub-tier lien waivers, very difficult. If you don't capture all that stuff correctly, your owner won't actually let you bill the next month's uh, pay app. So very important you keep all this stuff in sync and move it quickly. Risks are everywhere, right? One of the reasons people spend a lot of time approving these pay apps is that if they're five, 10, $25 million, there's gonna be a lot of eyes on those particular pay apps. And so all these risks add up and create a lot of time pressure there. And then, um, what is that coming out of the, the slide there? Concrete. Okay, got yeah. it. All right, it's something rolling downhill. I, I wasn't sure what it was. But, uh, uh, um, okay. there was. There was the phrase shit in, shit out in the analytics session before. Uh -huh. But no, that is concrete. Right. Yes. <laughs> so in any case, the, the net result of this is that the financial burden is, is pushed downward. So we were sort of talking, you know, if there's the airport project, right? You know, the city has funding for this, you know, through a, a bond offering or, or whatever. They're paying Big D, who's a really well-capitalized general contractor. Yet the subcontractors are out there paying their payroll every two weeks, right? Purchasing materials for the project on you know, 30 day trade credit, but potentially not getting paid for, I don't know, it's a public project. So, you know, mm -hmm. 90, 120 days later. And we think it's just frankly pretty crazy that the subcontractors are the ones kind of financing all this stuff. Um, and obviously that, you know, makes it harder for the subcontractors to grow and makes cash management much harder for them. And that seems like a subcontractor problem, but in our opinion, that actually affects all the stakeholders in construction. So over time, our vision is to, to really change that and let everybody pay downstream much more quickly and hopefully uh, alleviate some of these cash burdens and make construction way more efficient. So our first step there, obviously, is Procore Pay, which is coming in 2023, which I, hopefully you all heard this morning. Maybe. But we're super excited about that. Um, and you know, from our perspective, that's really the sort of next frontier for construction. So this is gonna become much bigger over time, but at the start, we're very focused on solving the problem for general contractors paying specialty contractors. And the reason that is, is that you know, on a given project, what do you have, 30, 40 trades per project every month. So you have to collect a lot of lien waivers, a lot of sub-tier waivers, you know, create a huge pay app and ultimately get that upstream. So that's where we wanna start, but we think over time there's some really interesting opportunities to basically go from you know, owner, even lender, all the way down to vendor. And so that's you know, Procore Pay solving this GC specialty contractor problem is really just the starting point for us. Um, you'll also see on the side, beyond payments, we think there's some other really interesting things we can do to help solve that problem. We're actually starting to work in Procore Capital land on actually helping subcontractors finance their materials purchases to help alleviate some of those cash constraints. And then in the insurance side, we're also looking at things like better surety brokerage. I don't know if you've seen the uh, funny <laughs> shirts that some of my colleagues have on that says groundbreakers deserve better insurance. Better insurance, yep. Um, so yeah, we, we said Danny's gonna have to wear that shirt uh, to, to the gym from now on um, to, to wear that. But oh anyway, so there's, um, <laughs> We're doing some interesting stuff beyond just software to help solve these problems, which we're really excited about. So a little bit more about pay. I mentioned this morning that we're starting with our invoice management solution and we're sort of extending it to handle lien waiver exchange, handle the payment readiness process. Did I get the right COIs? Did the project manager in the field put a manual hold on the job to not pay this sub because they haven't been showing up for a few days? 
provide a central dashboard for accounting teams to come in and choose which invoices to pay, and then in partnership with Goldman Sachs, actually move money down to the subs. And one of the reasons that's very exciting is that as soon as you do that, we can then release the unconditional lien waivers and make that whole process seamless. So we're really excited about that. Like I said, starting with GCs to subcontractors in the US, but a much bigger vision to expand globally as well as up and down um, over time. So yeah, um, cool. So I guess sort of where I'll leave it is Procore is doubling down on financial management. Hopefully you've sort of heard all the new things we're, we're rolling out. We think we have a great product today, but there's a lot more to do. Managing costs in construction is just super complex. And so we need to keep investing and in improving the experience, handling more and more use cases and making it easier for your teams to do what you all need to do. Um, so yeah, we're really excited about the, the future of that. And uh, yeah, thanks. So with that, we'll open it up for some questions for Jonathan and myself and Kaylin. Um, I think you said just shouting out was a good way to do it. Yeah, so <sighs> black and white cookie. Thank you all so much for joining the session. Uh, questions? Yeah. And can everyone in the back hear that question? Should we repeat it? Yeah, the question was, okay. since Procore Pay is not available, what is Big D doing right now for subcontractor payments? I'm actually ashamed to admit it but paper checks. So we're super excited about, about paper check people. Woo! Woo! <laughs> There's some other platforms we use, but I'm not gonna mention it here, but mostly paper checks, um, so. Love those paper cuts. All right, uh, next question, yeah. Uh, we do, we utilize the Procorm platform where we can, uh, and there are so instances where we use, utilize the Procore owner billing platform, and other times we have to do it outside in Excel. In Excel. This, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Question was, do you have any advances for the forecasting tool? Um, yeah, candidly, we're not working on the forecasting tool right now, so short answer is no. Uh, Longer answer is, since we're working on change management and payments, right? those are our two big focus areas and we wanna get that right. Um, so I, I don't think we're saying our forecasting tool has no opportunities for improvement. I definitely can think of many. many. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but I think that's, <laughs> yeah. So that I think, but you know, just wanna be candid and transparent. So as we- love we, to hear recommendations. That's right. But as we kind of finish out change management and feel like we got it to a place where this thing is world-class at change management as we get pay off the ground, as those wind down, then that's, that's where we can start to look at forecasting and some of these other things. Yeah, in the blue. Yeah, uh, so good, good question. That was uh, very loudly spoken, so I'm sure people heard it, but in, in case you didn't, um, you know, is this a, sort of a separate subscription? How does it work? And then do you need to actually move money through Procore in order to take advantage of it? Um, so a couple thoughts. One is pay will be a sort of new add-on to invoicing. Uh, so you will need to use invoicing in Procore to take advantage of it. And there will be, um, you know, some, it'll, it'll effectively be a new, new product add-on for that. Um, with respect to the second question, um, I think we think there's a lot of value for moving money through, mostly because then you can instantly generate your own conditionals instead of having to come back a month later and request them from subs or, or sub tiers. So we are, we are very excited about that. That said, there is a good you know, quarter of our customers who, who feel pretty similarly. So we'll probably figure something out that lets you take advantage of some of the new enhancements without having to you know, switch your entire payment process. So a little TBD on how we're gonna do that exactly, but uh, yeah, you're not alone with that question. Yeah. So, the, in case it really, you know, we want to replace that. Yeah. We don't want to see the material tracking. Yep. Yeah. So there was a good question about: Is this for materials payments? 
So I think, you know, how we talked about, like, at least at the start, it's really for managing GC to subcontractor payments. Um, you know, I mean, it could be used for uh, paying out material suppliers, but we haven't spent a whole lot of time working out all the details of that. Like, you know, a three-way match is probably important for that. That isn't exactly the same as it is for a subcontractor invoice payout. So I would say that's probably something to look at for later. Um, obviously, that's a big part of our vision, but in an effort to not oversell uh, what we have today, I think that that's probably to look at later. And it's really about the sort of downstream subcontract payouts to start. Got time for one more. You in the blue? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The luxury. I love that. I'm going to use that in marketing. Thanks so much. <laughs> Is that a product you've ever heard of? Texture? Texture? Yeah. 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 Have you heard oh, of that yeah. one? Right. Oh, I've never heard of it. Yeah. No? No. Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, so obviously, Spicy. many of our customers, well, to be candid, the majority of our customers have the paper check system for, for using this today. Some of our customers use Textura. There's a few others as well that some of our customers leverage. Um, so yeah, we're, we're really excited. We think we have a much better, more complete offering that's completely hooked in to Procore. Um, you know, and I think from our perspective, we're investing a lot of R&D and constantly improving the product. Um, so yeah, so I think there is an, an element of we're, we're hoping that general contractors who leverage Textura today are able to come over to Procore Pay because we can provide a much better experience. Um, for all. For all, yes. yes. Um, I think in terms of the pricing model, we're still trying to work it out. I think that our general thesis is that we believe in the unlimited user model, and that's how all of our other products are priced. So we'll definitely have an, an offering for Procore Pay that includes that. So you know that, that would be pretty different from the model you were just describing. Um, but we're still trying to figure it out, especially for those Textura customers who, and we've talked to many of them, feel very passionately that they're they strongly prefer that pricing model. And so we're looking at how we can potentially give our general contractors options for how they think about it. Um, but we don't really want to pick a particular uh, way of doing things, if, if that helps. One, 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 last, one, last, one last, last question. One last question, yes. OK, and then yeah. Vlad, yes. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so our, our integration will push budgets from our accounting software into Procore is how we have it right now. Um, and in saying we have, the, the integration is built so that if you write a subcontract in Procore, it, or in Procore it pushes it to our accounting ERP. So it, ours is a custom integration, um, so I'm not that familiar with all the other integrations, but that okay. capability is out there for sure. Yeah, so the custom integrations offer a bunch of different ways to do it. And you can also layer custom integrations on top of the out-of-box integrations, uh, which we've seen a lot of customers do. So yeah, I think, I think those are probably some of the good ones. I think one of the things we're trying to do also is automate more connections across tools. So today I talked about how estimates can turn into budgets, how bids can turn into subcontracts, how we, we were, I was talking with a customer about um, change orders and change events and how potentially that could hook into the estimating tool. So I think w that's where we're focused uh, inside Procore is a lot of you're using many other parts of the Procore platform. How do we bring that to bear um, and make your life much easier and sort of automatically move data across these connected tools? Yep. Correct. Yeah, I'd say more about the connections and the context of the data. But yeah, there are there are some some automations you can hook, hook in as well. Thank so you. yeah, absolutely. Thank you to Jonathan yeah, thank and you to all. Jeff. Thank you for joining us. Head on down to the keynote and have a great rest of Groundbreak.